If you have a unit, either one, that malfunctions and that's all you have, man, you're up a creek. They had a tire blow, pull off on the side of the road, or changing the tire, and the tire started on fire. Thankfully, they were able to get it out. They had some fire spray and a fire extinguisher, and everything was good. They just had to replace the tire. But it got me thinking, I've never really looked into fire spray, and I wonder how it compares to the BC fire extinguishers that come in RVs. So being that a tire fire spawned this idea of wanting to know how they differ and how they perform, I got a hold of First Alert and I, I asked them specifically, would this product work on tire fires? They said, yes, it would. And uh, this is the easy fire spray. This is the Tundra spray. Same product, different front labels. They're both product AF400. Let's go test it out against the BC fire extinguisher. So unfortunately, after I did this experiment yesterday and spraying my BC fire extinguisher from the RV and I had over half of the powder left inside and I went to go get a new one, I realized that the pressure pin up here, this little green thing, was down in the other one, which means that all the pressure inside of this can had released. So if you got a style like this that doesn't have a gauge, make sure that you check and see if this pin, if you press that pin down, and it doesn't pop back up, there's no pressure in here and it's worthless. Double check on these disposable cans that you still got pressure in there. So we're gonna do the test again with a brand new BC fire extinguisher and a brand new can of fire spray and see how they compare. All right, the fire's good and going now, so we're gonna get started with the fire spray. Remember to take off the plastic shrink wrap after you buy the product, and then you'll leave the plastic cap on because you don't wanna be messing with trying to get this little guy off if you have to use this in an emergency. Here we go. Uh oh. Now, I think it's super rare that I had a clog with this spray, but if it happens, stay calm, give the bottle a shake, turn the nozzle a little bit, try and clear that, and hopefully it'll clear just like it does here. So as you can see, the fire stop spray had a little bit of trouble. The nozzle got a bit clogged. I had to shake it a bit and then try and get it. Eventually it kicked through. I don't know what happened there, but it was not spraying full force right at the get go. So since that fire kicked back up, we're gonna let it go, get it back roaring again, and then try the BC fire extinguisher. So really what I wanna see is just the difference between how long they spray, how big they spray, and just the performance between the fire spray and the fire extinguisher. So I just want to interject and say, I know that the BC fire extinguishers are not rated to put out wood like the ABC fire extinguishers are. However, there's a lot of wood in your RV. Might be a good reason to upgrade to an ABC fire extinguisher. So let's give it a try. BC fire extinguisher. Here we go, pull it in. Interesting comparison between the fire spray and the BC fire extinguisher. So I was talking with my wife and she's like, the most common thing that we're gonna face is a grease fire. You should test these out specifically against grease fires. Because as we saw, the fire spray and the BC fire extinguisher weren't powerful enough to put out the campfire. The embers and the, the mass there just, it was too much and it reignited. So I've got some grease from this morning's bacon. We're gonna pour it in here, light it on fire, and then see how the fire spray does to put out small grease fire. Because ultimately the fire spray is what I'm gonna grab first to put out a fire on the stove. Now remember, with fire extinguishers, you wanna pass the fire extinguisher. You're gonna pull the pin or the cap, aim, squeeze the trigger or the button, and then sweep it back and forth at the base of the fire. And if you wanna dive deeper with other RVers about all things RV, DIY projects, gear reviews, travel locations, anything RV, come on and join us over at the RV Gear and Far Group. I'll make sure to put a link in the description box below. We'd love to have you. Well guys, that took a, a lot of effort to get a grease fire lit in the pan. Tried map gas, tried using accelerant with isopropyl alcohol, tried using an electric hot pad, wasn't getting hot enough. Finally had to bust out the Coleman stove with a gas burner. That along with the map gas, and I was able to get the grease started on fire. Finally have a grease fire. Might win a Darwin Award for this, but I really do not want to clean up the stove. Fire spray and a grease fire. The easy fire spray worked well on the grease. I was impressed. Just make sure with all fire extinguishers that you're not too close because the amount of force that comes out of these things 
if you're right up on the fire, you're gonna spray it and then you're just gonna spread your fire. So make sure you're three to four feet back. So again, I asked First Alert specifically about tires and their response verbatim was, the Tundra's home fire extinguisher sprays biodegradable formula works on fires, including wood, paper, fabric, and cooking oils. It can also work on putting out fires caused by electrical appliances and equipment. So it would be ideal for putting out small fires in your RV, including tire fires. So what did I learn? Well, I learned that you should not rely on one single fire extinguisher. If all you have in your RV is a single small BC fire extinguisher that came with your rig, it's not enough. So I tried two different bottles of fire spray two different times. One time it worked awesome from the get-go. The second time, as you saw, it clogged. Uh, so two is one and one is none because if you have a unit, either one that malfunctions and that's all you have, man, you're up a creek. Again, Easy Fire Spray and Tundra Fire Spray are the same thing. It's both model number AF400. It's the same stuff, different label. So when I was thinking about the fire spray, the first thing I thought of, well, this would be a great size and shape to stick in the truck. However, it gets really hot during the summer and really cold during the summer in a truck. If this is meant for only home use, it might not be suitable for a vehicle. So I got a hold of First Alert and I asked that question, is this suitable to keep in my vehicle? They said the operating temperature is between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The contents of the bottle will freeze at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, but once it thaws, they said that the product will perform normally, there'll be no ill effects. They said after 104 degrees, it'll still work. Once you get to 160 degrees, because of the pressure inside the can, the contents will evacuate faster, so you're not going to get the full length you would during normal operating temperatures. But it will still work, the fire suppression materials will still work at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. They also reassured me that the minimum pressure that would need to be achieved inside the can for the can to burst, according to the can manufacturer, is 670 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets hot in your vehicle during the summer, but you're not getting up to 670 degrees Fahrenheit, so there's really no need to worry about this can bursting inside a vehicle. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna replace this BC fire extinguisher in here. I'm gonna get a big old ABC fire extinguisher like you'd see everywhere else, probably twice this size, and stick it where this one was in the RV. Then I'm gonna get some of these fire sprays. I'm gonna stick one in the vehicle, one in the outdoor kitchen, and one under the sink. Because if I have a fire outside, I can use this to knock it down and then come in and grab the big fire extinguisher. If we ourselves have a tire fire, we can grab this, jump it out of the truck door, come back, knock it down while the other person is opening up the trailer to get the bigger fire extinguisher. I'm gonna use this first and or inside. If you spray one of these powdered fire extinguishers off inside your RV, that powder is going to be everywhere. It's gonna get in all your electronics, your microwave, the computer boards on your refrigerator, inside your computer, your cell phones. You're gonna be finding fire extinguisher dust for years. So again, if you've got these little ones, make sure you check little tab on the top to make sure that there's still pressure inside the can. Have a couple of these laying around. Now do understand that the expiration date for these is 12 years. These ones are much shorter. The one, the cans I got are about four years in length. Make sure you check the expiration dates when you buy them and then also make that part of your annual checklist to check the expiration dates on your fire extinguishers. Scratch that, you should be checking your fire extinguishers twice a year and also change out the batteries in your fire extinguishers. Put an X on the old ones and then put them in a bin to use them for less critical items because there's still some juice left in there and go ahead and write the date on the new ones so that the next person who opens these up knows what date these batteries were installed. And while we're on the topic of safety items, if you don't have a Rescue Me seatbelt cutter and glass breaker installed in your vehicle, you definitely gotta check those out. They are the best product that I've found. Check in the description box below for a link to the video review I did on the Rescue Me and why I highly recommend it over those ubiquitous orange safety hammers. So if you gained some value from this video, go ahead and show me some appreciation down below. Let me know what kind of fire extinguisher, fire stop spray you're gonna have in your rig, in your vehicle. Until next time, I'm Joshua. Take care and happy trails.